Hi class, this week we're going to talk about workers' compensation and also disability and automotive insurance. So again, review um, the revenue cycle steps and the learning outcomes and key terms, but we're going to skip through those for the bit so that we can start the lecture. I'm sure all of you have heard of OSHA being that you work and have worked in places that follow OSHA regulations. OSHA stands for Occupational Safety and Health Administration. It's an organization that helps to create protection for workers so that they are um, healthy and safe while working on the job. They set a lot of standards to guard against dangers in the workplace like toxic fumes, machinery, and excess noise to even protect your ears. Uh, businesses have to follow OSHA standards and regulations or they are subject to major fines. The Office of Workers' Compensation Programs, or OWCP, administers programs to cover work-related illnesses or injuries specifically to federal agencies. So, they administer these programs that provide medical treatment, cash benefits for lost wages, and also rehabilitation for the job if need be. There's a law called FICA, the Federal Employees Compensation Act, and it provides workers' compensation insurance for civilian employees of the federal government. There are other programs that are part of, that are included in the OWCP, including the Federal Black Lung Program for coal miners, um, Energy Employees Occupational Illness Compensation Program, which is specific to nuclear facilities, facilities that have silicon beryllium, um, but again, they have to be under federal agency. So maybe like a nuclear testing facility, they would be considered eligible for this program. Longshore and Harbor Workers' Compensation programs, again, fall under this OWCP if they are part of a federal agency. Now, the workers' compensation plans that you may be familiar with are run by the state themselves. So they can provide one of two benefits, or sometimes even both. Um, it could be either the medical expenses that result from the work-related illness or injury, or the lost wages while the worker was unable to work. So every employer has to be able to provide proof of workers' compensation insurance with the state to show that they are keeping all of their eligible requirements, to show that they are offering it to their employees. They're, they're able to offer workers' compensation from one of three sources, from the state workers' compensation fund, which tends to be the most common way, and that's where companies pay premiums into a fund every month, every year depending on the company themselves. They could pay for workers' compensation insurance directly from a self-insured fund, in which case they would pick between the two types of workers' compensation benefits, or they might have both. Um, or they could get it from a private plan, so any of those private insurance companies that we've talked about in the past. Not covered by state plans are federal and railroad employees because they are covered by the federal plans for the federal employees, self-employed individuals, real estate agents, any for hire domestic maintenance or repair workers, drivers that are under a lease agreement, so like long haul truckers, inmates that are employed by a prison, volunteers or independent contractors, clergy or agricultural laborers, none of them are eligible for workers' compensation. So workers' compensation ensures uh, you medical coverage or that you'll be paid back for the loss of work-related funds. You'll get that paycheck back for the time that you missed working um, due to occupational disease or injury. So say that you had a physical condition that was caused by your work environment over a period longer than one workday or shift. So it's not limited to the job site. Say somebody travels for work and they're not in the company. If they got hurt while doing a work-related task, 
they're still subject to workers' compensation. So the benefits are payable from the first date of injury, and uh, the payment dates and wage loss benefits vary by state. So it depends on what percentage of the wages you'll get back. Um, when they start paying out, usually it's really, really quick. If the injuries to the employee are fatal and they result in death, the benefits will go to the employee's survivors, to their family, and sometimes they even cover funeral costs. Work-related injuries fall into five different categories. Injury without disability, injury with temporary disability, injury with permanent disability, injury requiring vocational rehabilitation, or injury resulting in death. So injuries with temporary disability require a final report, which is a document that's filed by the physician um, when the patient is discharged before they can return to work. So it essentially tells um, the workers' compensation board that they are temporary dis temporarily disabled to what degree and when they they expect them to return to work essentially injuries with t injuries with permanent disabilities require an independent medical examination by a physician that confirms that the individual is permanently disabled an in an injury requiring vocational rehabilitation means that, that that person has to undergo some form of rehab in order to ready themselves to enter the workplace again. So say they got an injury to their hand where they lost um, a finger or maybe their muscles were greatly injured and they have to learn how to bend their hand again in order to do their job. Something along those lines. They have to do some sort of physical rehab in order to be able to do their job task again. Pain terminology is from minimal to severe, and it's determined based on how much their pain is affecting their ability to work. The disability terminology limits how much work they can do to what degree, and that also depends on their workplace. So if they're in a place where they have to do a lot of heavy lifting, then it, it would be good to state that in the documentation that they're not allowed to do that heavy lifting until such and such period of time. Or if they're ever allowed to do that lifting again. Due to HIPAA's privacy rule in workers' compensation cases, PHI can be disclosed to the employer without the patient's authorization, and they cannot request any disclosure restrictions when information is necessary for the workers' compensation case. So your employer will be getting all of your uh, pertinent protected health information for this case. So whatever you say to your, to your physician, your employer will also know that information as well. When coding for workers' compensation cases, they have to include external cause codes, which means that say they code something for low back pain in the diagnosis. The cause code has to be involved. Say they hurt their back picking up a child, there would be a code that they would have to add as a secondary or tertiary code that would state back pain due to lifting a child. The physician of record is the provider that first treats the patient and assesses their level of disability. They treat them, they determine what percentage of disability they have, and when they will be able to return to work. They will also be responsible for filing any progress notes or progress reports, and that will determine any change in medical condition or disability. So, for the first report of injury, it's a document that's filed in the state workers' compensation cases, and they it contains the employer's account of the events that occurred. How did they get hurt? And how did it occur at work? And that has to be filed within a certain time period in order for that patient to get the benefits. Um, then the state reviews the case, and they either decide that the employer is liable, and they submit an admission of liability, or they determine that the employer is not liable. 
so they submit a notice of contest. So sometimes when a patient is hurt at work and there's not enough evidence behind it, they could get um, denied workers' compensation. Compensation and benefits are terminated after the employee is re released by the physician. Um, if they're offered a different job by the employer, if they're exhausted ma maximum benefits, if they can't return to work for reasons other than that work-related injury, if they don't cooperate re for requests for exams, if they've returned to work, or if they've died. So when they've returned to work, if they had a, a temporary disability, for example, there was a period of time where I was working um, at a child care facility as a like a daycare worker, and I her needed a disc in my back, and I had to get work, workers' compensation because I was out of work for two weeks, and I needed that money in order to pay rent and bills and stuff. So I had to immediately tell them when I returned to work because otherwise they'd keep paying me money, and if I accepted that money, then that would be illegal. So you have to both tell your employer and your employer has to tell the state and you also have to tell the state that when you've returned to work so that you no longer accept those benefits. As you can imagine, workers' compensation claims are extremely, extremely specific and tedious and they require a lot of special handling. Um, that first medical treatment report has to be exact um, they have to collect all of the information from the patient when they were injured, um, all of their employer's information. They have to contact the workers' comp carrier for authorization to treat the patient. Um, they, the provider has to accept payment from the carrier as payment in full, so they have to write off any additional expenses that they normally would have paid in their fee schedule. <clears throat> The claim number has to be on all forms that are attached to the case so that it's easily traceable. And they have to use eight digit formats for dates. So very specific things that have to be included in workers' comp claims in order for them to be usable. So that was workers' comp. We're going to talk a little bit about, a little bit about disability insurance now. So there's a disability compensation program that provides partial reimbursement for lost income when a disability prevents an individual from working. And usually that comes in the form of cash payments that may have changed a little bit over the years. But um, initially, people who were qualified for disability had to go to a disability office in order to pick up their cash. Um, that was their partial income that was lost from becoming disabled. And that's provided through the federal government. There's also supplemental security income, which is for low-income older people um, or for those who are blind or have disabilities, and it helps to pay their living expenses. One that you may have heard of often is the Social Security Disability Insurance, and that's a federal program uh, for specific qualified people. <clears throat> people who are, who are eligible have lost wages due to disability and they've contributed to social security through FICA payroll taxes. So if you pay taxes and if you're employed you've contributed to FICA in some capacity so you would likely be eligible for this social security disability insurance if you met the other eligibility requirements. Disability reports also have to be extremely specific um, there has to be specific abstracted information from the patient's medical record, very thorough documentation. It includes all the following medical information. You can read through that yourself um, with a lot of in supporting documents. And because disability and workers' comp claims are so specific and time-consuming, you can actually bill the patients for the time it takes you to complete them. So while it's good for the provider, the patient might not be aware that they will be billed for the doctor's filling out of these claims. Jumping over to automobile insurance policies. So if you have a car, you likely you also have an automobile insurance policy. And that would be a contract between you and an insurance company um, where you pay a premium in exchange for coverage. 
that is specifically identified for motor vehicle related to financial losses. So it depends on what type of insurance policy you get as to how much coverage you get for your automobile. You can also get personal injury protection, which is uh, for medical expenses and other expenses related to motor vehicle accidents. This is usually no known as no-fault coverage. Subrogation is um, an action by an insurance company to get back expenses for a claim that was paid when another party should have been responsible for paying at least a portion of that claim. So say an insurance company paid for workers' comp when that patient had already returned to work. Um, they can undergo subrogation in order to get back that money that the patient should have been paying for their medical expenses when the insurance company was paying for them instead. Lien is are written legal claims on a property to secure a debt payment. So that's a way of getting back money that was owed to a specific place, like an insurance company for things like that. So if you have any questions, be sure to reach out. Um, and I hope you have a good rest of your week. Make sure that you read through the chapters in the book. They're very specific and they give a lot of details for these concepts.